R2D2, the R2 series astromech droid manufactured by Industrial Automaton was and is known to this day as a smart, quirky, caring, friendly, adventurous, loyal, extroverted, sympathetic, charming, helpful, giving, witty, resourceful, diligent, adaptable, energetic, easygoing, ambitious, and non-judgmental, okay get the picture, a droid who would serve a multitude of masters over his lifetime, and it is undeniable the cultural influence that he has had on our world today. For example, to name a few, Swarovski has paid tribute to R2-D2 by constructing a crystal model that features 446 luminous facets and detailed prints. Nippon Airways, which is one of Japan's national airlines, unveiled a Boeing 7879 in a special R2-D2 print, which has been referred to as an R2-D2 jet. In 2003, R2-D2 was inducted into the Robot Hall of Fame, and the Smithsonian Institution included R2-D2 in its list of 101 objects that made America. He has until this day maintained a very positive public image, but upon watching episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, I discovered reasons to believe that R2-D2 might not be so innocent, caring, and wholesome as we may have originally thought. Reasons that have led me to believe he may share a portion of the blame for the death of the younglings. After Anakin fell victim to the Master of Manipulation, Darth Sidious, and was officially appointed the title of Darth Vader, he is soon shown participating in the purge of the Jedi Temple where he embarked on a violent massacre that led to the death of the hundreds of Jedi Knights, Masters, and even younglings who cowered behind the ultra-comfy seats within the Council Chamber. Within Anakin's time at the Jedi Temple, one might reasonably think that there was no one else there to report of his horrible acts and hold him accountable, but almost immediately after the purge, we have a cut to the scene here, where Anakin returns to Padme's beautiful New Georgian-style townhouse with Roman Flair to check up on her and reassure that everything is alright. However, he has not arrived alone. Slotted within his Eta 2 Actus class interceptor is R2D2. Now I know Anakin flew this vehicle here on his way to intervene in Master Windu's arrest of Chief Palpatine, but the question is which vehicle did he fly to purge the Jedi Temple of its Jedi? If it was this vehicle here, then this could mean that R2D2 accompanied Anakin to that destination, potentially providing the various coordinates and requirements needed to get to the temple and finding places where to park the Eta 2 Actus class interceptor. Now I'm not necessarily saying that R2-D2 was involved directly in the killing of the Jedi and Younglings, but I'm not ruling out indirect involvement or R2-D2 pleading the fifth. This scene here forces us to ask ourselves the question of where on earth did R2 come from? Was he located at the temple waiting outside as Anakin crippled the Jedi, allowing the Sith to claw their way into galactic dominance? If so, R2 would have surely heard the gunfire and battle cries of the fallen victims. And what did he do? He seemingly fell silent on the matter. Now if R2's presence within the scene here is enough to suggest that he was present at the Jedi Temple during the Purge, then a more technical term that could be used to describe him would be accomplice. R2 was an accomplice in these acts. Wikipedia defines an accomplice as a person who actively participates in the commission of a crime, even if they take no part in the actual criminal offense. Technically speaking, R2 could be up for a felony murder. R2 series astromic droids when plugged into the Ita 2 Actus class interceptor serve the purpose of monitoring flight performance pinpointing and correcting technical difficulties, and performing power management slash optimizing shipboard systems. These are all tasks that were no doubt required if Anakin used his Eater 2 Actus class interceptor to travel to the temple, thus implicating indirect involvement in the death of the younglings. This also brings me to the death of the Separatists of Mustafar. After being ordered by Power Platoon to kill the Separatists, Anakin and R2-D2 swiftly make their arrival on the swelteringly hot planet. As Anakin makes his way to the Separatist conference room area, R2-D2 is told to stay with the ship, where he suddenly starts beeping very nervously as if he knows Anakin is about to do something very, very bad. Don't just stand there and beep nervously. 
you little boiled egg shaped inflated egomaniac with metal the quality of a biscuit tin. You just previously enabled Anakin's ship to reach hyperspace through the ram of your astrogation buffer that allowed Palpatine to get his wishes of global dominance just that little bit faster. Instead of doing anything to thwart Anakin's extermination of the Separatists, R2 does absolutely nothing. And for the rest of Star Wars, he plays the fifth by revealing nothing of the matter. I mean, yes, he does seem to try and make up for his cowardice ways from hence onwards where he played a pivotal role in helping the Rebel Alliance destroy the Empire's Death Star super weapon and by participating in the battles of Hoth and Endor, but is this enough to paint him over the bodies of our airplanes or to induct him into Horrors of Fame? Surely these positions should be left vacant for heroes and enforcers of good, not individuals who legally speaking could be charged with felony murder. I mean you might as well paint Master Meter onto the plane instead. <laughs> because he didn't intend on participating in Emperor Palpatine's global empire and the suffering it brought with it. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and thus found himself trapped in the Emperor's screams. Why don't we induct Master Meter into the Hall of Fame or emblazon him onto diamond necklaces? There is an inherent double standard. The next plane I ride on, I want Master Meter's face on it. And if it ain't on when I arrive, I'm not letting the flight attendants arm their doors for takeoff until one has been painted on. And it's not my fault everyone is going to be late to their destination. It's the big corporates who don't delve into the Star Wars lore to see that R2-D2 isn't actually the wholesome, well-loved, courageous hero that they continue to portray him to be. So there you have it. R2-D2, unless anyone can disprove my evidence, should share a portion of the blame for the death of the younglings through indirect involvement. He also never got his memory wiped throughout all of Star Wars, so he pleaded the fifth for many, many years. Perhaps that's why Yoda was somewhat displeased with his presence on Dagobah. I shall file today's findings into the Jedi Archives, in a place where Jocasta Nu can't find them, because you'll probably just erase them. And I shall see you all in the next video. And remember, be happy. We lost the transmission, sir.